Welcome back, and I'm happy to welcome our Director of Finance, Betty Parker, for our Department Head Report. Good morning, Betty. Good morning. It's Thank good you. to have you here. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. And you have been working here in the Village for how long now? 26 years. And how many times have you appeared on this day? This is the first time. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> we finance people try to hide behind the scenes a little. You're busy. I know when I come to your office, you're very, very busy. So, but welcome to the show because it's very good to hear from you and good to have you here. Thank you. And today we're going to talk about some important things that are coming out this season for residents. Right. So this is the time of year. We've finished the, the big long budget process and the boards all approved their budgets by resolution. So now we're putting together these packets that go out to all the residents. Oh. Um, it's required by law that the resident gets advance notice of their assessment change. Yes. And so um, to make sure they get that 30-day notice, they're all going to receive a, a packet. It's a wide envelope. It's going to come in the mail. Mm -hmm. It has lots of information inside. And I get those at home, so I understand <laughs> how easy it is to so this just is a, toss it aside. Yeah. <laughs> but this is a large size envelope. Oh, we see it right here. Yes. There is the envelope. So and residents it, need to look for this envelope in the mail. And it is important that they open the envelope. The very first page on the top is going to be a personal letter okay. um, that's specific to the unit um, for their assessment and mm -hmm. it's going to show the amount that they're going to pay okay in 2018 we call it the assessment comparison letter because it compares to what they're paying now right so here's what you're paying now in 17 here's what the new amount's going to be in 18 okay and usually that bottom line is what everyone wants to know the letter is individual because in United people have property tax mm -hmm. it's different mm -hmm. uh, for every unit depending on the value of the home and when they bought it so the property tax will be added in included in the total and in third people live in units that have certain surcharges for elevators or garden villa rec rooms and so forth right so you can't look at your neighbor's letter you've got to look at your unit number and that's the amount that they'll be paying starting in January. Oh, I see. So that's the cover letter, and that mm -hmm. is personal to every recipient and every resident. Yes. And then under that cover letter, there's a packet? So then there's going to be a packet, a lot of information stapled together, um, and this is the annual budget report mm -hmm. and, a, and a policy statement. So there will be a table of contents to try to help guide you through the whole thing. And um, if So you, we pulled that table of contents up. Um, uh, last slide, I believe, or is this it? That's right it. This so is it. it starts with your mutual, whether you live in United or Third, it's going to show you your business plan, mm -hmm. if you're interested in knowing what's behind those numbers and, and what you pay for every month. Right. That business plan is going to be there. Also the reserve study. Uh, you live in an HOA, we put money aside into a, a savings account for the eventual replacement of things like roofs and asphalt and mm -hmm. painting. And so the reserve study is uh, part of that disclosure. And then there's all sorts of policies and procedures like collection policies and fines and fees and um, architectural guidelines. So that will all be stapled together. Use the table of contents to navigate through that and find the information that you're interested in. And that is a lot of information. That's really good, too, because not only do you learn about your policies, your fees, you learn about the ways you can meet those requirements, but also you get your architectural standards. That's pretty helpful because people always do have questions about what really am I able to do to improve my manor or my, my residence. That's right. So payments um, happen one of two ways. Mm -hmm. 70% of our residents pay um, online by Easy Pay. Right. And Easy Pay is a program where the amount for your assessment is automatically deducted from your bank account. Yes. So it's called auto debit. Mm -hmm. uh, the brand name here is Easy Pay. And we do have a slide of that Easy Pay form. It's one of our, the last slide before the pictures, if, uh, if our guys can see that. Easy Pay is just a single sheet, and it has the Easy Pay logo at the top. And it's a very good way to take a look at how to pay these assessments and fees easily and online. Right. So if you don't want to hassle with writing a check and coming into the building uh -huh. and making that payment, then you can call us and sign up for Easy Pay. Mm -hmm. The form is available online, or you can call the number that's on the mailing. And there it is right there, the Easy Pay right. form. And, um, and you bring in a blank check or a voided check. Right, you bring in your check. If you're already on Easy Pay, so mm -hmm. if your assessment's already being automatically deducted from your account, the amount will change in January. Oh. So your new amount will come out um, and it will coincide with what you've seen on the letter. Yes. The 
deduction comes from your bank about the sixth of the month. Okay. Every month. And that's and good, too. you don't too. have to worry about it. Yeah, that it's the sixth and not the first of every month. But if you prefer the old-fashioned method, we do send out coupon books. And so if you get a coupon book, um, the new ones will come out sometime in December. Mm -hmm. And you'll be able to tear off those coupons and mail them in with, with a check. And do the coupon books go to all residents or just those interested in not using Easy Pay? Only those that are not on Easy Pay. So yes. we got 70% of the residents on Easy Pay. We'd love to get more. Mm -hmm. It saves administrative time. It's easier. Um, you don't forget your payment. You don't get late fees. True. So it just works all the way around. Um, but if you need the, the, the coupons to go with a, a physical check, then yes. we will send those out. But it's good to have the 70% of residents that do use Easy Pay yeah. because that streamlines the process and it does save money in the long run because it's all automated and we don't have to use a lot of, of staff to make sure that those payments get made. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. There's a few other things that will be included in this packet. Okay. Um, some important items. There will be a blue form. Yes. It'll be a loose document like this. Okay. And this is an emergency contact information. Um, most people might have seen this or filled it out, um, but if you've not seen this before, submit this. It goes to security, and that way there's emergency contact information on file uh, if anything should happen, if you're away from your home or anything happens to you, and mm -hmm. um, there's other people that can be contacted to help. And in your packet, there are some things that will be filled out, like this emergency contact form, and they'll be sent back in, and how do residents get that information back to you? This is the um, only one that really needs to be returned, okay. and so they can just bring it by the community center. Okay. Um, there, it doesn't come with an envelope um, for because we don't know how many people are going to need to right. submit this who haven't done it already. Right. So just um, bring it to the community center, and we'll get that information in our system. Okay. That's good. And so the packet contains some other things as well. Yeah, there's going to be a few uh, loose pieces of paper at the back of the packet, these mm -hmm. colorful things oh. that are really important to go through. Um, it's helpful information for um, if you need to hire a caregiver. But the oh. steps are for hiring a caregiver, getting approval before that happens. Um, if you're moving, if you're moving in or moving out, checklist of things to remember and things to do. Oh good, so that's this form that has the orange box at the top. Mm -hmm. And that's for whether you're moving and the caregiver form has this big purple box at the top. Right. And yeah, then last great. we have tips for safe driving. This has been to put together by our security chief, Tim Moy. Oh good. And some reminders of... And the, I'll take that because I yeah. definitely need those tips. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so do I. Tim and I have talked about this. I need this one. But this is good. So these are great. And they've got seven here. Yeah. Oh, top ten. ten. The top ten tips. Especially that rolling stop. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. I'm going to memorize these because these are very important. But this is a lot of good information, news you can use, but then of course the very transparency of our management services to let residents know exactly what's happening with everything in the village. Right. And this packet does get mailed to the owner of record. Okay. And so it might be an outside address. Yes. A lot of them go to an outside address. So if you don't get the information that you're expecting um, by the first week of December, then you can call our office and um, request the information that you need. But um, the packets will not be mailed out till starting next week. Okay. And it takes a couple of weeks. We start with Third Mutual, mm -hmm. and so all of next week, those, those will be mailed out in small batches. Okay. And then the week after Thanksgiving, United's letters will be mailed out. We do United Second because they have those property taxes, oh. and we give the county as much time as possible to get us updates mm -hmm. um, for recent resales so we can have the correct amount of property tax included. And before the year's end, most residents should be able to receive this information and know what's going on. So I know inside the packet here, we also have the budget report, and it, it talks about the operating budget and uh, schedules and plans for that budget. Right. So if you missed the budget meetings during the year, this is a good place to see what happened and get the information. We will also be putting this information online. Oh, good. Um, so sometime before the end of the year, what we call the green book, is a, a compilation of all the budget reports for all the corporations, um, including some staffing information, uh, information about the operating departments. Mm. And so this green book is available online uh, as a PDF file if you like to peruse through that and learn sure. more about the 
The mystery behind the numbers. <laughs> but it, it's the numbers that people are concerned about and the very fact that everything about what's being done and what, what is being um, impacted here in the village, it's not only available in this packet that's sent to your residents, but you can also see everything online and that's available to everyone. Yes, the boards have spent a lot of time preparing this budget for next year yes. and very conscientious about controlling costs and providing services and in improving the quality of life here in the village. So this is a result of their efforts and they want to be transparent and provide that information in, in a helpful format. And the helpful format really is helpful because in your table of contents it very clearly lays out what information is, is where and how easily you can find it. And of course that's online as well. In the and, green and you book. can always call with questions. Oh, I'd be happy call. to help. <laughs> <laughs> so you have three ways. You can get the packet in the mail and read this hard copy. You can go online and download the PDF of the Green Book, and then you can also call with any extra questions you may have. Mm -hmm. Well, that's terrific. That is a great way of getting the information out there. And we know, Betty, that uh, we haven't seen you on this day, but we have mm -hmm. seen you around the community center because you have been here for 20 years, like you said. And you've just been a tremendous help in, uh, of course, every operation that we have here at the community center. But also, we celebrated some holiday parties, and I wanted to show everybody what you wore. <laughs> Your Halloween party, there's Betty. She's the ringleader. We did. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see these pictures. This is our happy and crazy staff, but you guys uh, were competing right there for an award. We were. We were in it to win it. <laughs> and we have 15 full-time employees in financial services. Yes. They all dressed up. We were the circus, really a cast of characters, <laughs> and we had a lot of fun. We didn't take home the trophy. Aww. We feel a little cheated, but it was great fun, and, and I just love that everyone participated and showed their individuality. <laughs> Halloween has a great tradition here yes. uh, with staff, and, and we really had fun. Well, maybe you didn't take home the trophy, but you clearly took home the popcorn. Right. So who's the popcorn right there? Oh, that's our uh, newest analyst. Oh, good. Linda Shepard, yeah. <laughs> she hasn't been here very long. She just jumped right in with a homemade costume. It was great. Well, it's, it's just wonderful to see the holidays because I'm new at, here at the village. And to see how everybody celebrates and works together as a team, it's a great team building kind of fun party to have. And I'm looking forward to seeing even more of those as the holidays continue. And it's good to see you. We hope that we see more of you here, Betty, now that you've been on the show. Thank you. Anytime. <laughs> Good, good. We'll, we'll probably take you up on that. All right. <laughs> but thanks for being here with us this morning. Thank you. And thank you for being with us as well. We'll be right back after this.